I feel bad for ancient peoples. You know, you know, there's all like the diseases and uh, lack of refrigerators and frozen yogurt that, you know, makes me feel bad for them. But, but especially I feel bad of how they were incapable of predicting solar eclipses. You see, solar eclipses, because of the, the angle of the moon and the orbit around the Earth and then and the small size where everything has to line up just right, it's almost impossible to predict solar eclipses. Like, there are kind of regular patterns, but, you know, in, in a solar eclipse comes every two-ish years somewhere on the Earth, but any one particular location is only going to get a solar eclipse every couple hundred years, and then every country, like extended region, is only going to get one every few decades. And ancient astronomers, you know, would pay attention, they would record eclipses, they would have histories of this, and they would notice kind of patterns like oh if we have one then like oh there'll be another one in 18 months unless it's you know unless it's like the third of the cycle and then we have to add like half a year and subtract is like it was just super complicated and they could never really accurately predict them like they might be able to say you know maybe this month there might be an eclipse kind of sort of i'm guessing isn't the best way to be an astronomer. This all changed in 1715. And this all changed with the greatest assist in scientific history. You see, earlier, earlier, uh, Isaac Newton had developed all of his laws of motion, you know, the, the, you know, motions or objects in in motion tend to stay in motion, objects at rest tend to stay at rest, force equals mass times acceleration, opposite equal uh, reaction, all that, all the good old-fashioned Newton's laws. And Newton had a realization. And he had this realization when, according to him, he saw an apple falling from a tree. Like, we, there's this classic picture, and we assume it's like this myth, but it, this is according to him that he had a, a snap when the apple fell from the tree. Because as he watched the apple fall, he realized that the apple is accelerating. You know, because it's moving. It was not moving. Now it's moving. That requires an acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. If the apple is accelerating, then there must be a force on the apple. Like nothing's pushing it. There's no strings, but there is a force to cause that acceleration. Let's call this the gravitational force. And here's Newton's big insight. Forces have an equal and opposite reaction. If there is a force pulling on an apple coming from the earth, then there must be a force from the apple pulling on the earth. Forces must be in balance. There, so whatever is pulling on the apple, let's call this gravity, the earth is pulling on the apple, the apple must be pulling on the earth with the exact same force of gravity. And if it's happening here between an apple and the earth, it's happening everywhere throughout the universe. Gravity is universal. Using this insight of his laws of motions applied to this thing called gravity, he was able to calculate the speed of the orbit of the moon. He's like, oh, if it's an orbit, this is math, dot, 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 boom. He figured it out. But he didn't publish it. Like he, like, he wrote it all up, and he's like, oh, this is pretty interesting. And then he put it on a shelf, and he went doing other stuff. But his best buddy, Edmund Haley... Got talk, talking to Newton, you know, they're having chat, you know, having some pints or whatever. And, and hey, and I'm sure it just came up in conversation like, oh, yeah, I figured out gravity, uh, whatever. And he was like, what? Tell me more. And I'm sure I'm, I'm this is all fictionalized, of course. You know, you know, I, Newton's like, well, you know, apply laws of motion. There's this universal gravity, figured out the orbit of the moon, applied it to other, but then it just, you know, this is kind of boring. It was just, you know, it was a way to kill an afternoon, I guess. And Haley's like, do you realize how big of a deal this is? Please publish it. He's like, nah, nah, nah. And Haley's like, dude, 
publish this. This is a big deal. And, and Isaac Newton's like, fine. If you say so, I'll do it for a friend. I'll do it for you. So he publishes it, blows up the world. Haley's like, I told you so, dude. And Haley, Edmund Haley, was like the first person to apply Newton's work on universal gravity to like everything. He's like, I don't understand that. I'm going to try universal gravity. I don't understand that. I'm going to try universal gravity. The whole Haley's Comet thing, universal gravity. And he also worked on the eclipses. You see, he had access to ancient records of eclipses. And now that he could predict the motion of the moon, and he could predict the motion of the earth around the sun to very, very accuracy, not using any cycles or rhythms or trying to guess at it, but just crunching through the math of using gravity, he was able to predict. Haley was able to predict an eclipse. The eclipse occurred in May of 1715 over London, which is where he lived. How convenient is that? He was able to predict the occurrence of the eclipse to within four minutes. Four minutes. And that's the only reason he was off is some tables of the periods of the moon that he was using to, to calculate the orbit was a little bit off. That's it. Four minutes. For the first time in human history, someone had accurately predicted an eclipse. And it was because of Newton's laws, but it was Edmund Haley applying it four minutes how ridiculous is that no no computer no calculator just good old pen and paper quill and paper sure hand calculations able to predict it. and he made a map too he made a map of the path of the eclipse and if you've ever seen an eclipse map that shows like the shadow and then like uh 90 coverage 65 percent coverage etc and like lines going across yeah Haley like did that you can go look at a map from 17, of, of Halley's eclipse from 1715. It looks like a modern-day map of an eclipse. How does, was he able to figure out like the shape of the shadow and where it occurred and how long it will last? Using universal gravitation. Thank you, Newton, but most especially, thank you, Haley. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you liked it. Don't forget to sh uh, like, share, and subscribe, and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter so that we can have some universal gravitational support. Sure.